When it comes to buying a pet like a reptile, price is usually the main factor in making the decision. And this is because price is tied into a lot of things like the care, the species of reptiles, the enclosure you get, the substrate, and the heat requirements. So if you're a guy who is, or girl, who is looking for a type of reptile who is simple, not necessarily caring about the price, but still wants to stay, you know, decent, because uh, it can get expensive, then this is the perfect reptile for you. I'm Rose Reptiles, and this is a Crested Gecko Care Guide video, and I'm going to discuss everything you need here in just one moment. the reptile itself, crested geckos, wherever you went. Now crested geckos, we should probably start with the diet because the diet of a crested gecko really excites me. It is not cockroaches, crickets, worms, or rats. It is a really cool powder that you mix with water. It smells like fruit. Um, I've wanted to eat it a couple times, but I, I don't actually recommend that but it's less disgusting than other uh, reptiles' diets. And uh, it's a little pricey, you know, a bag will come up to about $10, but you know, if there's a lot in there, it'll last for maybe like two months, depending on the size of the bag. It'll last me like um, a month, maybe two months, actually, it should last. It says three, six months, but uh, I don't know. Oh, it says you have to refrigerate it, so I, I haven't been refrigerating. What I like about these two is they, it's not a, just about the different flavors for me. That is really cool. The fact that your Crested Gecko doesn't have to stick with the same flavor every night, but the colors to me, the colors get me. The colors, I've, I've been getting this one, it has like a lily white Crested Gecko on it and it's black and gray, but I also get it because it's for growth and it has some really cool flavors, um, like, uh, uh, fruit. It doesn't actually say. Another thing that really excites me about geckos, and I'm just gonna jump to heat really quick, is that they don't actually need any heat sources. And I know that may come to a shock. Now, I think there's a given, I think there's a line that you can cross. If your house is about a certain temperature, like under 72, I think getting a heat mat and thermostat and keeping it around 70 to uh, 79 degrees inside the enclosure will be okay, but you know, the normal house temperature is about 72, and that is just perfect for these little guys because they come from New Caledonia, where it apparently is cooler climates, which I would think being, you know, close to Australia, and Australia being so hot that it too would be pretty hot, but apparently not. Enclosures, you can do anything from like a plastic tub to a really nice $5,000 enclosure. Um, I don't know why you would spend $5,000 on an enclosure, but if you have the money, you can. But a plastic tub from Walmart that costs like uh, $5 up to like an $80 glass gecko terrarium will do. Um, you just want to make sure that it is tall and uh, wider, not skinny. You don't want them to, you know, take two steps and be on one side, take two steps and be on the other. That's just not right. But you do want it to be tall and um, you also want to make sure that your humidity is good. You'll want about a 60 to 100% humidity. And I personally did not know this. I kept them on 70 only. And um, then I realized that you need to jump the, uh, the humidity sometimes to um, imitate a natural environment. Um, it's rainy where they come from. They come from a rainy rainforest. And I like to give my animals about as natural as I can get, if possible. Another thing is, is, uh, substrates. You'll want something that's going to not mold because of the amount of humidity this enclosure is going to get. You're going to want to buy the perfect thing. I recommend not getting topsoil like people tell you because that mess gets moldy as heck. Trust me, I've had my experience. Um, but an Eco Earth, maybe a cocoa fiber is really good. It doesn't mold easily and it holds humidity in very well. It's 
one of my favorite substrates. You can also get some frog moss to help with humidity. Of course, they dry out, but the frog moss will uh, hold in humidity for, you know, a good bit until it dies. Your crusty gecko is also gonna need a place to hide, and I'm not talking about a hide, guys. Don't give your crusty gecko a hide. I mean, yes, they may hide in a tree, um, log hollowed out tree or something when they get it but more than likely they're gonna be hiding in the leaves um, in ferns that grow on the trees and maybe crevices so I recommend like a spider wood or grapevine makes it closure maybe natural if you want to go with natural but if you want to stay on the cheap route you can get some artificial plants you can put those in the enclosure they'll, they'll look nice um, with some lights and um, you can get LED lights put their enclosure, but maybe like a UVB light or something, something like that. Uh, they're still gonna need that as long as you know, as long as you don't get them anything that's gonna provide heat. But there's obviously still gonna need UVB. And of course, they're also gonna get a lot of their vitamins from the food. I highly recommend this. Um, it's it's good. So we've talked about enclosures, you can get like a plastic tub up to a glass enclosure, the substrate, the stuff you want to put in there, the heat requirements, the humidity requirements, the food requirements, and let's just talk on the, you know, the price. So a crusty gecko can range from an average $150 all the way up to about $10,000, and uh, the $150 are probably going to be about your normals. I've seen normals go for about 60. Uh, this is a black, white, and red Dalmatian crested gecko, and he came up to about $128. And so you could get one just like the one I have for about that much. Um, and there's there's a wide variety, uh, different colors and stuff. I don't think there's blue. So I'm sorry to all my blue fans out there. Who, up on my live streams and ask for blue leopard geckos and blue turtles and stuff. I apologize, but you're not going to get a crested gecko in blue, but you can get a red crested gecko, and I think that's just as good as blue. The only thing is, is um, I like blue, so it, you know, it doesn't make it up for me, but a uh, red crested gecko is still really cool. Also remember that this, just because this is an easy animal, the price can, will be low. Uh, you still want to make sure that you're paying attention to it. Easy animals don't mean you can leave it in the house for five days, come back and check on it, and then maybe decide if you want to feed it. You're still going to need to take the responsibility and feed this crested gecko. And babies are going to want to eat around every night, where I've noticed these uh, juvene, juvies, like the one I have here, he wants to eat about three, two to three times a week. And um, he usually, you'll know, they won't eat it. I'll leave it in the enclosure, they won't eat it. Uh, they will take a super worm because they're like movement. And so they're like the T-Rex. Whatever they see, they'll eat. Whatever they don't, they won't. Unless they're actually hungry, then they'll go looking for your food. And um, yeah, so please, if you're, you gotta take the responsibility and really take care of this animal. Remember, simple doesn't mean leave it. It doesn't mean not watch it. Simple means that when you come back home every night, if you work, if you go to school, every night you come back home, no matter what, the care is gonna be simple. It doesn't mean, like I said, leave it for five days. Every night it will be simple. I personally love crested geckos. I feel like they can get personable uh, sometimes. Mine is definitely personable. He loves to uh, come out. He loves to sit um, on me, usually my shoulders, but I think it's cooler if I have him sitting on my head, actually. And to me, a lot of times I get animals, and I'm not always all about the morphs. And, you know, when you're going to go buy your uh, leopard gecko, you're going to look at the morphs, and you're going to probably be like, Wow, I really want that, but it might be expensive. And for me, just to give you, just to give you um, uh, some advice, I I was about the same way. I just wanted the morse, and I just decided that if I want a crested gecko, I don't have to have the five thousand dollar crested geckos. I could get this cheaper one, right? 
and so I did, and he is one of my favorite reptiles in the reptile room. I actually, I really love him. Geckos are uh, my favorite, um, anyways, but I think out of geckos, um, oh, but I think out of geckos, uh, Presto geckos, leopard geckos, and toke geckos are just really some of my favorite. They're really cool. Uh, they're all different. They all got their own personalities, especially toke geckos. And they all have their different colors, and uh, leopard geckos actually, too. I think I have a care guide video talking about the morphs and all that stuff. Leopard geckos, um, too, also have really cool colors. And what makes a uh, crested gecko really cool, and one of my personal favorite reptiles, and my highly recommended reptile, I believe that this is the number one reptile. It's not the number one growing reptile when it comes to people buying them, because that's bearded dragons, but you know, still people are, you know, giving up their bearded dragons and not taking care of them right because they don't realize that they need so much care. The crested geckos don't need all that care. It is so simple. You could maybe spend five minutes a night uh, doing care and then handling them or whatever, and then you're done. They're simple. The food is easy to make. The heat requirements are much. The humidity, um, you sometimes have to watch over a little a little bit but you can also get some you know drippers or rainforest systems in there to help you whenever you're gone that's probably what I need to get because I go on trips a lot um, I'm probably gonna get them before I take my before I go on my trip to Israel the enclosure requirements are good the substrate is easy you may get a bag of substrate for ten dollars an enclosure for eighty or five dollars um, Decorations for about twenty to thirty dollars. Spider wood is expensive. You don't have to do that. You could do some vines off of Walmart. So five, uh, ten dollars to thirty dollars when it comes to decorations. Food about ten dollars um, every two every two months, and that's really about it. The water you get from you know you can get like a spray bottle. Uh, I use this spray bottle right here, and it you know it works good. But I use I usually have to spray down the enclosure every hour um, in the day, and I usually don't have that time, so I just pop the humidity up 100 each time, and it goes down really fast. So it's not like he's getting respiratory infection. I'm Rose Reptiles. This is Rumi, my crusty gecko. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you learned a couple things. Also, watch this video right here on how my toke gecko has to go, or this one right here. Um, that one's scary. I was walking in an alligator park, and uh, um, anyways, but YouTube really thinks you'll like this channel right here. I'll talk to you guys later. Um, I hope. Yeah. You should hope with me because it's hard to make these videos, especially when your roommate wants to go. I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Thank you for watching the video again. Goodbye.